Hello and welcome back to this new video. In this video we're gonna be doing the ghosting images or the after images when a character is got like going really fast in anime or something. I don't know, here you go. Look at this, wow. I held off from making this tutorial for five months because I didn't like the way this animation looks. But I have to upload it someday, right? So yeah, uh, here we go. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial part. What we're gonna have to do is add any object, uh, a plane will do fine. Uh, and make sure that plane is in the world origin. So that's right there. You can just do that by pressing Alt G, Alt R and R, Alt, Alt S, there. Okay, now we're going to the geometry notes tab, if you have that. Uh, if you don't have that, I, that's weird. <laughs> so let's drag this down a bit. We are in solid view. I'm gonna set this to texture and this to my custom matte cap. There we go. Now we can view our shit better. And what we want to do now is put everything that we want to have ghosting into one collection. And in our case, we only want Genji uh, and all its objects, but Genji has a bunch of objects. So let me just select all of them. So by pressing shift click and just selecting all of his objects, we should be fine. Or we can just go down here. We do not want these. We want everything that is in Genji. like. This one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and that one, and this one, and that one. Now that we have all our meshes selected, we're gonna press M, new collection, and make a collection like Genji after Im uh, images or something. That's good. And with this collection, we're gonna do something really cool. Where's our plane? There we go, there's our plane. Um, we're gonna put this plane in some big collection, if it's not already. Uh, we just want to make sure that it's not in the same collection with our Genji. So uh, move this to scene collection. Let's name it so that we don't lose it. Uh, Genji after images plane. And now we're gonna add our geometry nodes. And we're gonna do something cool with we're gonna do something cool and new because we're gonna add simulation nodes, simulation zone. And this might seem scary, but basically all this does is repeat what is happening in this zone every frame. So what we want to do here is basically like copy Genji every frame and just put them in the same place as he was the frame before. I don't know, just let, let, let me show you what I mean. What we want to do is add a join geometry and put it in between these simulation thingies. And we wanna grab our collection we just made. So we grab a collection info. If you have one object that you want to do this with, you can also just grab an object info and that does the same thing. But what we wanna do is grab our collection, which is our Genji after images. If we look at that, if we preview this by pressing Control Shift and left click, if you don't have that, you should go to edit, preferences, get extensions, or I mean add-ons and Wrangler. Wrangler, Node Wrangler, enable that. And then you can shift click everything you want to pre- Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Go back. Thank you. Uh, if you preview this, you can see that we have our Genji right here duplicated. And we basically want to duplicate them every frame. So what that looks like is basically this right here. We're going to join the geometry with nothing. <laughs> and if we plug this in here now or, or preview it. No, not skip preview uh you can see it copies itself a bunch this is so sick look at this what is happening oh perfect but we do not want to keep all of these genjis all at the same time because especially if you, if you have a low-end computer this will oh, hurt your performance so bad so what we want to do with all these genjis is delete them or delete them after a certain amount of frames like basically give them an age so how do we do that well we need to give that age a name first so we're gonna add a named attribute node which is basically saying we're gonna give a value a name and we're gonna give it the name age and we have to make sure that this gets stored within the simulation zone so that we so that it updates every frame. So we're gonna have to have a store named attribute node in there. Put this also to age so that it updates. Basically, we're gonna have to plug this in here, but because we want to add one to every frame so that the age goes up every frame. And then what I mean by the age goes up is like, for example, if we go back here, this is where our Genji is now. What I wanted to do is store this age name in this Genji right here. And every time we go a frame further, we want it to add one to this value, which is age. So basically every frame 
it gets one older. And that's uh, very easy to do. What we want to do is just add a math node and add one. So it's gonna add one every frame. As I just said, we want to store that number for every Genji, not every point on Genji. <laughs> so we will set this store named attribute to instance and one Genji is one instance. Now to make sure that these two correlate with each other, we're gonna have to add a capture attribute. There we go. And set this to instance and set this instance to age. And now it's like, ah, that, that is this. So we can add in one age every frame. Well, I don't know. And now we can add a delete geometry and basically say that when a Genji is older than some number, probably 10, we, if we want to have 10 after images, we're going to have to delete them. So how do we do that? We grab another math node. I'm just duplicating this by shift D and set this to greater than. And if we set this tra thra trash, 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 this trash hold to 10 and plug this in uh, this or that. This is big mystery. Okay, we plug that into that. Boom. Set these to instance. And if we go back here and nothing happens, maybe because we have to plug this one in there. Set this to timeline so that we can reset our information where am i there like this ah there we go okay so basically plug this one in there and now we have successfully created some after images how cool is that no okay moving on what we want to do is make these after images have like a cool uh a cool uh color yeah so we're gonna go to viewport shading because as you can see right now we have this <laughs> we just have a bunch of genjis which is not exactly what we want, or not in my case. I don't exactly want this. I want these to like be kind of rainbow-ish, like in like uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Uh, that's what this entire thing is based on. So how do we do that? Well, what we can do is grab this. Uh, if we press Shift and then hold right click as we drag, we can create this little point here that splits everything. And we can give this another material which is not the Genji material. So as you can see right now, we're giving it nothing. But if we add a material here, set this to ghosting or after images, something like that, we can now look this up here. And if we change to shader nodes now, you can see that if we decrease the alpha here, it decreases the alpha there. Oh, it's already like a ghost thingy. Wowie. By the way, as you can see, when we are lagging, it's gonna create less after images because our computer cannot handle this. So how do we fix that? Uh, we are going to go back in geometry nodes and we can just bake this right here. Uh, if we bake it now, whoa, we don't want to have a still bake. We want the entire animation. Oh, and then it just goes and then you have all your data stored. Boom. And now it's going to have consistently every frame one Genji. It's also quicker if you preview it. So if you have a low end computer, uh, baking is really nice. But what we do have right now is that if you want to have like a fading effect, like I had in the beginning of this tutorial in the, in the video, we do not want that every single one of these Genjis has the same color or opacity. Uh, so how do we, how, how do we just, how do we do that? Well, we created the, this little thingy for that. And that is a little thing that stores our age, which we can display in shader nodes if we just transfer it over to shader nodes. We grab this attribute slide in here. We add another store named attribute in here, which is gonna be once again, age. Oh, not age, age. And then we're gonna drag this all the way over there. And then also set this to instance. There we go. And now we can go back into shader nodes. Oh and display that value, which we do by looking up an attribute and setting this to age. And if we preview this now, nothing happens. And why does nothing happen? Because we haven't realized all of our images yet. And we do that by going in here, realize, boom. And there we go, now we have a value. And you see that this var value is very wide, which is not exactly what we want, but it's still pretty cool because as you can see, it starts off as like a darker white and it becomes whiter. Uh, that is basically a visualization of the age. So if it's really dark here, that means that it has like a low age of like zero or one. And then as it gradually goes up, it's like two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. But that's a very big number, which we do not want. And it's also going to 
increase as we increase the amount of after images we have. So if we plug this color into this alpha now, you can see it really doesn't do anything. That's because we have to change this value. Well, change this value to be a more uh, normal gradient from zero to one. And you can do that by like putting all of this in a map range and dragging this value all the way up to 10. And now it goes from zero to one. As you can see, if we plug a color ramp in here, we can now slide between this and go from zero to one. Very epic. Uh, but if we want to change the amount of after images we have, you have to change this as well. There is a pretty easy solution for that. We just have to store how many after images we are going to create in geometry nodes, the same way we store this age. So we go into geometry nodes editor. Where do we have this age? There we go. Like this value is how many Genjis we store, which is pretty epic. We can also just put this in here. Oh, put this in here. And as you can see here, it now created this value, which we can name as value and then double click this and press this to amount or something. Let's set this to integer so that we have like a nice rounded number. We can't really have like one and a half Genjis. We, we have to have one or two or nothing in between. But uh, now that we have this amount here, we can store that same way. So let's drag this out, duplicate this, plug it in here, set it to amount, and then drag this in there. Uh, we have to set this amount to 10 because we have 10 after images to have 10 Genjis. Uh, and by the way, so if you delete this bake, now it's gonna continue making those Genjis. Right now it's storing 10, but if we wanna store two, it's gonna only store two of them. Why is it not storing two? Oh, apparently you can't do less than three. Uh, that's weird. But anyway, so you can increase the amount of Genjis you want here. But you can also set this to 30 and then have a lot of Genjis. Wow, that's sick. But let's set it to 10. And when we go back to shader nodes... Uh, wait, before we do that, we have to pick this again because it's very slow. It's very slow because of these realized instances thingy. Okay, so now we can go back to shader modes. Shader nodes, uh, duplicate this attribute and set it to amount. And we can now preview that amount. Uh, uh, oh, okay, let's see what's wrong. Oh, wait, we have to set this to point. Point. Whoa, bright. Shader editor. And now we can plug this value in there. And we easily get a nice little gradient, which changes depending on how many Genjis you have. And with this value, we can add a color ramp. No, add a color ramp. A color ramp, please. There you go. Plug that in there. Set this color ramp to HSL. Put this at far and set this value to a beautiful red and set this value to a beautiful opposite of red or blue. I don't know, a blue, there we go. And now we have a rainbow. And wow, it's beautiful. And if we just go ahead and plug that into our emission here, uh, plug this into our alpha, by the way, uh, maybe we'll wanna reverse that. Yeah, we wanna reverse that invert color. Uh, boom, uh, that does nothing because we have to like also plug this in there, but also set the strength up to one and boom, we now, have our rainbow after images. How cool is that? Now, I personally want to add a little more detail to this. Like right now it's kind of flat and you can see right through it. And the seeing right through it part is pretty easy to fix. What we have to do for that is uh, add a geometry node, add a math node, which we will plug right there. Set it to multiply, put the back facing value in there. Oh no, I just realized uh, we have to invert this as well so that we don't show the inside instead of the outside of Genji <laughs> and now oh, oh we can just set this to blended oh splendid and now set this transparency overlap to none uh, oh look at this oh well, now we can also like for a little little more detail we can also like add another mix node mix color put that with the transparency and add a little layer weight and put that facing in there and then set this to multiply. Oh, how great is that? Ooh, can also just like kind of adjust this, flip it maybe. 
yeah, I don't know, man. Just do what uh, do what you want with this. Uh, that's just basically personal preference at this point. But what isn't personal preference is that we do want this Genji to be like in front of the after images because what's the point if you can't see the Genji? And for that, there isn't really a solid way to do it in Blender, like in the viewport. So what we're gonna have to do for that is when we render this, basically you want to render this after images thing and the Genji and the background separately. And then later you would composite the Genji and the after images over the background. And a good way to do that is is duplicate this scene right here. So we're gonna make a linked copy and name this after images. And now what we're gonna wanna do is click this little filter right here and press this on, which is a holdout, which is basically gonna say like, do not render this, but act like it's still in the viewport with, uh, in our case, our after images. And what we wanna do is disable everything but the after images here. So how do we do that is you select one collection, press shift and then click this button. And then that, do that with this right here as well and do that with this and then that right there as well. And now you only have the after images, but as you can see, when we go behind an object, okay, it's pretty difficult to spot here, but when we go behind an object, it's basically going to, uh, as you can see, still be there so that we don't like composite our Genjis on top of something. And we also set this film to be transparent. Now we can switch between these scenes and as you can see, Everything is the same, but here so we have only our after images. So that's pretty cool. What we can now also do is do that, do the same, but with Genji only. So we're gonna do that, do it again by creating a linked copy and set this linked copy to Genji only. And in this one, we're only gonna want to show Genji. So we turn off this collection. We don't turn off animation because Genji is in there. So this one, we don't want to put the hold out. And this one, move this into collection. Do we move this into collection? Okay, no, no, let's make an entire new collection for this fucker. Move to images. I can't be bothered at this point. Okay, so put this to hold out again. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Oh, I see why. Okay, so no, we just have to turn this off instead of putting it to hold out. We have to turn this off there. And now we can render this separately. Make sure to all also have this to transparent. And now we have our Genji separately, our after images separately, and our entire scene. Uh, in which, by the way, we do want to turn off uh, our after images as well uh you do not you don't you don't you don't want to turn off genji or at least do not turn off his uh everything because we do want to have keep the shadows but now we can render the, each of these separately and put them over each other while compositing so if we render right now by pressing f12 you can see that we're gonna have to put this genji over the images and the images over this image <laughs> and how we do that is we go into compositing uh and with these scenes we just made we can duplicate this uh set this to after images and if we preview this we have our after images separate and duplicate it again and then we can set this to genji only and if we preview this we have our genji only and now what we can just do is put these over each other so we can go to alpha over Plug this in there. Oh, plug this in there and plug that in there. Let's see what that's like. That's exactly what we want. And then we can alpha this over this. Wowie and wowie. Oh, wowie and wowie. Boom shakalaka. Uh, yeah, and if you render this out, it uh, will uh, look okay. But what you can also do is put all of these in a different file output directory. So if we put a file output and we can just put this in here and set this to one that says like full background, a folder that says full background. So that will be here, full background, accept, accept, and then duplicate this and put this in there and call this, uh, I mean, create a new one uh, and put this to after images okay accept and duplicate this put this in there oh put this in there go back back no back and then get genji 
go in here, accept. And now if you render this animation out, it's gonna save all of these separate. And then you can put them together in your own software of your liking. Very epic and very cool. But yeah, that's been it. That's the very basic version of this, even though I've been recording for an hour. The geometry notes are pretty simple. Okay. <laughs> all right, see ya, bye.